So while the natural log is a fairly simple function that you learn about, maybe like in a pre-calculus type class, and you learn about taking its derivative fairly early in a calculus class, finding its antiderivative is tricky. And in fact, often you put off taking the antiderivative of the natural log until a calculus two class, a second semester of calculus. And that's because the standard strategy is to use integration by parts. But today I'd like to present a geometric method which I found in an article from the two-year college math journal. Okay, so let's get to it. So this is all going to be based off of the following picture. So this picture lives in the Cartesian coordinate plane and I'm going to say that the horizontal axis is the T axis and then the vertical axis is the Y axis. Now it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that we're going to put the graph of the natural log onto this uh, picture here. So let's do that. Let's say this is the graph of our natural log function. So I'll just say here that we have y equals the natural log of t, but observe that that is equivalent to saying that t is equal to e to the y. Just based off the fact that the natural log and for lack of a better word, the natural exponential function are inverses of each other. Okay, great. And so now what I'll do is point out that this point right here, which is the t-intercept, occurs when t is equal to 1. So it's well known that the natural log of 1 is 0. And then we're also going to go maybe out here and say that this is an arbitrary point x. And then let's observe that if we go up here, maybe put a point right here. This is obviously the point x, natural log of x, just based off the fact that we are along that curve, y equals natural log of t. That means that this point along the y-axis is the point natural log of x. Okay, so that's most of our picture, but now we're gonna observe that we've got a rectangle in the first quadrant that's been sort of obviously or naturally broken into two pieces. And I'm gonna call this piece right here region one. So I'll call that R1 and let's maybe shade it. So we'll shade it in this peach color. Okay, nice. And then, well, we've got this other region over here that I'm gonna call R2, and I'll shade that as well in this pink color. Okay, okay. So now let's see where we can go from there. So let's note, like I said before, we partitioned this rectangle into two obvious pieces. Then that means that their area can be rewritten as the sum of the areas of those two pieces. So we've got the area of region one plus the area of region two is in fact equal to, well, the area of that whole thing. But the area of that whole thing is really easy to calculate. It has a length of x and a height of natural log of x. So it's equal to x times natural log of x. And then we can also calculate the area of each of those regions using an integral, an integral for each. So let's rewrite this area of region one as, well observe that that's the integral from one to x of the natural log of t. So here we have one to x of natural log of t dt. And uh, really the nice, or I should say the proper way of writing down an antiderivative like this is to often rewrite it in terms of a definite integral where our upper bound of integration is a variable. Of course, that's kind of baking in the constant of integration, but that's okay. So now let's just do a little color coding here. So this red is going to correspond to this red right here. And now, well, let's do the same thing for the area of region two. But let's observe that region two can 
easily be written as an integral over the y-axis. So let's do that. So that's going to be the integral from 0 up to the natural log of x. That's the highest y point of, well, observe that it'll be e to the y dy, just because we're integrating with respect to y in that case. Okay, so all of this is going to be equal to x, natural log of x. And let's also maybe bring our color coding down. This area of region two, like I said, is this bit right here. Okay, so we've got that equivalence. But now let's notice that this first one is the one which is our goal, like I said before, and this second one is easy to calculate. So bringing this down, we have the integral from one to x of natural log of t dt is equal to Taking the antiderivative here, I should say plus, taking the antiderivative right here will be e to the y evaluated from zero to natural log of x. That's gonna be equal to x natural log of x. But of course, we can take this e uh, to the y evaluated at natural log of x and zero and rewrite that as x minus e to the zero, which is kind of obviously equal to x minus one. But now moving things around, we'll see that we have our antiderivative. So we have the integral from one to x of natural log of t dt is equal to x natural log of x minus x plus one. Just coming from moving that yellow stuff to the right hand side of the equation. I guess I should point out here that or we could take this as an indefinite integral to say the indefinite integral of the natural log of x dx is equal to x natural log of x minus x plus a constant of integration. Okay, so there we've had it. We didn't do any sort of integration by parts maybe actually I should say we hid the integration by parts in a geometric argument. But that being said, this could be presented very easily before learning integration by parts. And we've landed at the antiderivative of this tricky function, the natural log function. And that's a good place to stop.